Hello, White Ball Cricket fans, and welcome to this first episode of the weekly IPL show here on the Top Order podcast. I know it's our second IPL episode, but it's the first one with Raj and I, which means it's the only one that really counts. It's been an incredible week of IPL. There's been nine games already. There's been records set, records broken, all sorts of things to talk about, Raj. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's start by asking, you know, what's caught your eye this week in, in the, the greatest tournament that's ever, that there's ever been? We might even have to roll it back a bit further than that because in order for it to catch my eye, I'd have to be able to watch it. Um, uh, yes. I, you know, I believe you've got some prepared remarks around uh, well, how tough it is to watch in New Zealand. It has been tough to watch. I'll let you unpack the secret decoder ring that uh, unlocks the IPL here for punters in New Zealand. But look, I've had a fruitless week being entangled in the uh, sticky threads of the dark web trying to get access to the IPL this week. I've been on the sort of dirty underbelly of social media. I even went on a secret trip out to the dot-com mansion uh, one, late one night with a roving oh, no. uh, wireless device trying to get some access. But look, unless you've got uh, a secret decoder ring and some combination of sky channels that you can tune into once in a blue moon, it's tough to get access to the IPL here legally in New Zealand. So we've been following along on uh, YouTube, on on sort of Crick Info highlights and live by live scores and reports and so on. So it's tough to watch here in New Zealand, Raj, yeah? Yeah, really horrible symptom of just having the one sort of provider in the country, uh, mm. unfortunately. But um, look, we move on. We still get to watch. We still get to follow along. True. Um, the greatest cricket, great, greatest IPL cricket tournament, 2020 tournament in the world. Let's, let's call uh, it that. Something like that. All look, of the above. It's... It's been an incredible week. It's it's mm. hard to believe that there's only been seven days worth of cricket played. There's been nine games. There's been, look, records set all over the place. Mm. We, we should start with this record-breaking game. I think it was a couple of nights ago now. And I looked at it and was very, very confused in the morning because I didn't stay up and watch this Sunrisers Mumbai game. I looked at it and thought it was a 50-over match because it was 277 for three plays, 246 for five. And I thought, that oh, that... It's a good, it's a good hundred hundred over game, and then I realised, of course, it was only played over forty overs. So look, records mm. set everywhere here. Um, things to talk about: there was five hundred runs scored in a T Twenty, highest score by a side batting first in IPL history. Uh, bettering, I think it was your RCB in twenty thirteen mm. made two sixty odd, so it went well past that. And then Mumbai made two forty six in reply. That's the highest chasing score ever. It's a fair um, chase. It's a fair chase, and you mm. still lost by thirty. So, yeah. like they, like they didn't even get close in the end. Um, but the, look, what do we want to talk about in this game? Because I, I think we do have to talk about the record, right? Yeah, I, I think I think we actually isolate it rather than talking about the actual game. How far has the game come in terms of we talked about? If this was you know nineteen ninety six, that would be an incredible. That would be a high scoring one day affair. Uh, in 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 that affair, has the has the balance shifted too far towards the bat in cricket? I mean, we talked about the Wankhede Stadium being, uh, uh, you know, a bit of a graveyard for bowlers, but this is taking it to the next level. This is absolutely next level. I'll give you this stat. There were 38 sixes hit in that game. That's almost one and over on average, right? How many sixes do you think were hit in the 92 World Cup total? Uh, 12? I don't know. Yeah. I, I would have said that there were 12. There were about 90-odd hit in the, in the entirety of the 92 World Cup, which we thought was fantastic entertaining cricket, certainly in our lifetime. So there were 38 DHL or see it maximums. I don't know who the sponsor is this year. Yeah. Um, can't watch the game live, so I can't tell. Um, 38 maximums, I think, is, is too far. I mean, you have a look at Heinrich Klaassen, 80 not out of 34 balls, four fours, seven sixes. Like, it's some unbelievable... Hitting on, on both sides of the ledger. Are you entertained, though, to quote the great Russell Crowe? Well, Rusty would know entertainment. If anyone knows entertainment, it's Russell Crowe. I was, I mean, I would have been entertained. If I, if I went there to that game and I took my kids to that game, I would be massively entertained. But as a cricket purist, I sit there and look at that and think to myself, how much of that is a game of cricket and how much mm -hmm. of that is a home run derby at the baseball all-star weekend? You know, like where is the balance between bat and ball? And I think that's something for us to unpack as we go through the IPL. But if there's going to be games like that throughout the tournament, I think the, the, the balance between bat and ball is certainly skewed. 
168 yeah. is the lowest score batting first in this IPL. There's been like most scores over 170. There's multiple scores over 200. So it's definitely a batting tournament. Um, and if you're a bowler, look out. All of our records or all of our predictions about who will be the leading wicket taker in the IPL, they could have three wickets at the end of the tournament and still be the leading wicket taker at this point. So look, runs, runs are plenty. Um, that was a loss for Mumbai, wasn't it? Against it was. yep. uh, yeah, 0-2, I think. Yeah, I went to against the Sunrisers, who I think we'd expect them to beat, would we not? Mm. Yeah. And who'd they lose their opening game to? That it was, was to against CSK. Was it? Uh... Let's have a look. Got Facts can tell against Gujarat. So Gujarat. yeah, Gujarat defended 168 against Mumbai. So, yeah. so <laughs> should we be right? Look, uh, about Mumbai, I'd, I'd, I would not be pushing the panic button uh, at the moment. I think the the loss to Gujarat uh, is much more of a concern there, and I thought they should have probably chased that down, and they were in position to do that. Um, Jasper bowled well in the first first innings against Gujarat, and I thought that, that Mumbai would chase it down, but they, they didn't quite get there, only chasing 168. Only mm. you know, we've talked about how many runs have been in this uh, IPL so far, but, but that that's more of a concern to me. They didn't chase that down because they have the talent to do that quite easily. I'm not so concerned about the 277 versus the 246. I feel like that game is a bit of an anomaly, high scoring anomaly. And mm. look, I don't think you can be disappointed putting up 246, even though you did lose. It was just one of those games that you you, you put in the rear vision mirror as soon as you can. Oh, so. In, in, am I worried? No. No, I'm not worried. What do, what do you think? Do you think the cracks are going to start showing and the Hardik versus Rohit's going to come out shortly? I, I don't think so. I mean, that's what everybody's watching for, right? Everyone's watching for the leadership discussion. I think it's more concerning that Tim David and Hardik had a prime opportunity to do their job and finish that game for Mumbai <laughs> and they didn't. And I think, you know, if they finish... Let's say they finish seven and seven, and they could have finished eight and six, and they miss out on the finals. That would be a game that they would look back on and say, "Well, we probably missed a trick there, and that could have cost us." I'm more worried about Delhi at zero and two and what their season looks like, really, than than what I would be about um, about Mumbai. And the only reason I say that is Delhi lost their opening game to Punjab, who I think everyone expected Punjab to struggle in this IPL tournament. Um, but they beat Delhi in the opening game. And then obviously Delhi lost overnight to uh, Rajasthan, not without controversy. I might add Ricky Ponting, as you said earlier off air, Raj, the arbiter of all cricket justice and, um, and rulemaking was very incensed that, uh, that Rajasthan had an extra overseas player on the field as a substitute for a, a wee while there. And I mean, no one gets up Ricky Ponting like substitute fielders. So um, plenty of controversy there in that game, but look, Rajasthan are on fire. At the moment, they look like a front runner, don't they? Just before we get to Rajasthan, just on Delhi Caps I, again with Mumbai, I don't think you can really be upset about that. The loss to to Rajasthan there, you know, Rajasthan are a good side. We'll talk about them mm. straight after this. <clears throat> the loss to the Punjab Kings, though, uh, uh, the second game of the IPL was a bit more of a uh, a bit more of a wake up call. Uh, stand up and pay attention. What happened here? Um, and it could have been a lot worse if it was not for Abhishek Patel, his little flurry at the end, 32 off 10, to actually um, put a respectable score up for the uh, the, the Delhi Caps batting first, but uh, ultimately they couldn't defend it. Uh, that That is a, a, a early sort of warning sign or alarm bell ringing for, for the Delhi Caps. Uh, so we'll see how the rest of their season pans out. Rajasthan... Uh, much more positive to discuss for, for me. I, what I really like about the Rajasthan side is guys like Riyan Parag. You know, when he goes out and scores all these runs, um, he just makes that batting lineup look really, really long. You know, with Jaiswal, Butler, and Samson all coming in before him. Samson traditionally yep. has that incredible start to an IPL and sort of trails off towards the end of it. But uh, yeah. Uh, all of them, they, they, they look very strong, bowling well. Um, they're going to be hard to stop, Rajasthan. Absolutely. They don't have many weaknesses in their lineup, <laughs> as we talked about in the preview, and they've, and they've hit the ground really running there. They what, are second in the tournament at the moment. They've got some big games coming up, though. They've got Mumbai next, then RCB, then Gujarat. So they've got some big, big games against heavyweight sides coming up at the top of the tournament. And for, De and for Delhi, it doesn't get any easier. They've got CSK next, then KKR. I want to talk about them next, actually. 
and then Mumbai. So, you know, one of those teams, Delhi or Mumbai, is going to be really struggling uh, by the time we get sort of five games into this tournament, I think. And, and there will be something to talk about there. Look, Binksy's not on the podcast. Let's get some real talk going about Kolkata. They play LSG tonight. I fancy Kolkata to beat LSG tonight. I don't know why. Don't ask me why. But I fancy them to beat them, which probably means that they'll lose. Um, <laughs> what 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 have we learned so far? I mean, they had a close game against the Sunrisers. Who knows what their form is going to be like? Dre Russell went berserk. What's, did you, what's did you know the, Binksy? What's the story? Used, did you know Binksy played a season with Dre Russ? I did know that. Yeah, that's come up once or twice. Binksy's Binksy. played with Dre Russ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but he was amazing for them. And, you know, what would we say? The over or under on, on Dre Russ winning man of the matches is two and a half. Well, there's two one half, out of yeah. one. Yeah, so he's only got one and a half to go. Look, he, he must have been listening to the podcast, the IPL preview we did. Uh, the, the, the gauntlet was laid down. Is is um, Andre Russell actually worth his, his weight in gold as he's being um, valued in the IPL? And he showed it, that, that 64, just absolute belligerent, 64 of 25. Uh, and then coming in and chipping in with some wickets as well. But the, the, the mm. batting, the way that he came in and just finished that innings off to push them over that 200. Um, look, he's done it one out of one. But you say if he does it two more times this uh, this IPL, he's he, he's he's paid himself off, paid paid his paycheck off to the to the um, Kolkata Knight Riders top brass. KKR, they're in a good position. They're on fire at the moment. I mean, who knows? I mean, I've I, I fancy them tonight, as I said, against LSG. So get your money <laughs> on LSG. It's funny what a difference winning makes, though, doesn't it? Because no one's talking about Heinrich Class and sixty three off twenty nine. Um, be, only because Sunrise has lost the game. If I think if they'd won, we'd be talking about we'd be talking about Heinrich Klassen. But the South African batters have come out in week one and laid down a massive gauntlet. Other than Quinton de Kock, we talk about Klassen. We talk about uh, we talk about Trist, even Tristan Stubbs had a good innings oh. the other night. Um, there are just so many power hitters in South Africa's uh, lineup at the moment, and they, it seems like all of them are, are smashing it. Heinrich Klassen, he's he's, he's got the the cap, I believe, the whatever. Does he have the cap? The orange cap or whatever. Anyway, it's up there. He's got 143 off 63 balls through two innings. Um, he's just devastating with the bat. Again, that, that pivotal sort of closing role. Uh, the team, unfortunately for him and his team, the he's in the Sunrisers. Unfortunately for the Sunrisers, his closing efforts have been in, in vain a little bit. But uh, he... Um, He's been he's been closing well, and that's what that's what a lot of teams are looking for, and he's been doing it. Is he is he? Can you tell me if he's the orange cap wearer or whatever it is? I'll I'll try and find the the stats here. Hang on, standby, please, caller. Uh, view all stats. I can confirm he is, is the. This is riveting. The orange cap wearer. Riveting wearer. viewing. There you go. One hundred and forty three off yeah. sixty three balls. Jeepers. Yeah, those South African bats have laid down a gauntlet so far, and I feel like it's it's actually just Klassen and a bit of Tristan mm-hmm. Stubbs. But it, but but it feels like every game there's a South African player. Gerald Kutsi has put in good performances. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's actually there's a, there's been a lot more South African players featuring in this IPL yeah. than I would have expected. Um, Rabada has been fantastic. good too. Yep, Rabada has been good. Kutsi has been in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marco Janssen's played. There's been a lot more guys playing than I would have that I would have personally expected. Um, can I can I change about... subject? Can I change subject for you here? Please do. CSK. So bef- the the talk of the the they were the talk of the the competition before the competition started, a couple of days before um, Mahendra Singh Dhoni handing the reins over to 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 Guy Quad there. Uh, we've seen the leadership change happen before uh, with uh, Dhoni stepping down and uh, Ravindra Jadeja stepping up and that lasting half a tournament before it kind of fell mm. apart. Uh, they're off to a great start here. They're looking strong. They're two from two uh, and playing really well. Uh, how do you see? How did you see that leadership change over and, and their form so far? Well, I, I really like it because I think you know you talk about teams with timelines. You know, you have a look mm-hmm. at dynasty teams and CSK over the last four or five years feel like a dynasty team to me. They're always there or thereabouts at the top of the table, if not winning the tournament. And a lot of it has come down to great management and great leadership from Mahendra Singh Dhoni. And he's been able to hand over the captaincy now to a young player. He's still there to transition the team 
I mean, if you think about basketball, we watch a lot of basketball as well, Raj. You think about the Golden State Warriors trying to manage those two time frames. I, I think CSK are doing a fantastic job. Of course, they're getting tremendous performances from their overseas. Ravindra's been great. Uh, they've had tremendous performances kind of up and down the order. It, it doesn't matter who they roll out. Everyone kind of seems to be stepping up. So, look, I, again, we like them at the start of the tournament. I've got nothing to, to tell me otherwise. They've had convincing wins over Gujarat, and they've had a good win over RCB as well, two sides that we expected to feature in the finals. So, yeah, look, for me, CSK and, and Rajasthan, no surprises there because they're both the undefeated teams. Look far and away the best two teams of the tournament so far. And as a honorary Kiwi, uh, how Thank excited you. how excited are you by Ra, uh, Rachin Ravindra's uh, contributions so far? He, he is definitely the uh, biggest beneficiary of the Conway injury, not being able to make the IPL. Uh, he looks like he's carving out a decent-sized role in, in this uh, top order of CSK. I love him opening the betting for a start. I think that's a fantastic spot to put him in. He probably wouldn't be there if Devin Conway was in the side. So if there is a silver lining to the Conway injury, it's that we're actually starting to see how good Ravindra is at the top of the order. I was watching some highlights of his the other day and just the power that he's developed over the last 18 months in his game, Ravindra is just breathtaking. Uh, We went to a T20. I think it was the season before last and we saw him here at Eden park Mm -hmm. and the commentary was that, Oh, this guy's a good bat. He's a great test cricketer or will be a great four-day cricketer, but doesn't have the power. The shots that he's able to play now in the IPL, particularly in the first six overs where he could thrash the ball over the infield with just about impunity, is just breathtaking to watch. And he's taking the IPL by storm as he took the World Cup by storm 12 months ago. Look, I'm so proud for him because I think this is the tournament where we're going to figure out if teams have got an answer to him, if teams can figure him out. You know, by this stage... There'll be a lot of footage of Ratchin. There'll be a lot of footage about where he's strong and where he's not strong. So if he's continuing to score runs, it means that he's worked on his game and worked on his weakness and he's able to counter, you know, teams being able to to pay attention to him in the scouting report. And on the other side of the ball, we've got uh, the renaissance of Mr. Fizzer Rahman there. He, he had an incredible performance first up against RCB. Uh, he bowled the fifth over, went bang, bang, and then he bowled the 12th over and went bang, bang as well to get that four for 29 from his first uh, first four for the tournament. He's been an integral part for their uh, their success in their last two games. Well, we talked about it earlier in terms of, you know, the batting being so dominant. If you can get a guy who can go at six or seven and over, I mean, Dishpande went at five in their first game. Um, Mustafizer went at sevens. Dipak Jahar went at seven. So if you can get guys that are going at effectively less than eight and over um, in an IPL game, they are like gold dust at the moment. And Mustafizer has got all that experience, all that skill. He might not be super fast anymore, but he can really, like, he can execute his skill set um, as well as anybody. So, you know, all of these guys are able to put performances on the park for CSK that have got them in, in a winning position early in the tournament. And look, uh, as long as I keep riding them, they're, they're shaky because my ability pr- to predict outcomes is uh, terrible at best. But I just like I just like everything about how they play cricket. And it's no surprise that Stephen Fleming's in charge. And... I, I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'll go first. But what is your sort of surprise packet for for this IPL so far in the first week or so? I'm, I'm, for me, I'm going to say it's really been the, the the sunrises, the KKRs, the Punjab Kings, where we had them sort of stone dead last in a little group together. Uh, they're all in the top half of the table, uh, looking strong. I mean, I know it's only a small sample size, but uh, they've been the real surprise mm. packet for me. What about you? It's just the number of runs scored. Honestly, yeah. like I would have expected teams to come out and be a bit scratchy early doors and we had a few sort of 145 to 160 games, but we've had none of that. We've had 180 plus scores just about all the way through. We've had this 277 plays 246 game. So the sheer number of runs and the number of times we've seen guys come off and make 80 off 25 to 30 balls, it's just outstanding. I mean, it it, it, it almost beggars belief. And, and if you go back to our childhoods, you know, mm. kids watching the game now, our kids are watching this and going, this is just, this is how cricket's played, right? Yeah, well, well, you know, maybe maybe when we're uh, in our twilight, the uh, one day is will be 500 plays 500 every, every week. Something to look forward to. Who knows? There I think go. we've hit all the things we wanted to hit, Raj. Mm-hmm. 
Indeed. I think we've hit all the things we wanted to hit. 20 minutes on the clock. Uh, is there anything that you want to close with before we step away for yet more uh, IPL coming up? No, nothing for me. I just, uh, my point I wanted to reiterate is just on uh, the the runs that, that have been scored, the bat really dominating mm. the ball through the first sort of 10 days of the IPL. I'm interested to see when the when the ball starts to come back into it. Will the pitches start to turn a little bit, get a little bit slower? I don't know, but um, it would be nice to see a little bit of balance, I think, towards the end of this IPL. It would be it would be great to see a little bit of balance uh, as a bowler. It's uh, it's absolutely nightmarish to watch these batters go berserk. I'm looking forward to the Gujarat Titans coming up. They've got games against Sunrisers, Punjab, and LSG. If they're going to make noise at this tournament, they got to go on a run in the next week. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, until we catch up again, Raj, it's been great to talk to you again. Have a wonderful uh, extended break here in New Zealand, four-day weekend uh, to celebrate the Easter break. So I hope everyone's enjoying the IPL content. Looking forward to talking to you again. Thanks for joining us, Raj, on the top order.